we'd move into a house and we'd start to get things from, you know, Goodwill or Salvation Army or something, and then we'd have to leave it because the doors were locked and there was a padlock on it. The houses that we lived in were often uh, one or two months, and then we'd move because we kind of moved from eviction to eviction. Went from school to school, a lot of different placements. I thought a lot of that change was normal. I thought, you know, living in different houses was normal. I knew the school thing wasn't normal, but I kind of thought, you know, I'm poor, like, I, I may smell a little bit more than the other kids, or I may look different or not have a haircut like the other kids. There were many more nights going to bed hungry than going to bed with a full stomach. Started to really notice some of my parents' downfalls, and uh, at that point I realized my mom was selling herself just to make money for drugs, and then my dad would beat her uh, to go out and sell herself, and then when she came back and the drugs ran out, um, he would beat her again because he cheated. And it was just kind of a repetitive cycle over and over again. Oftentimes there was like abandonment feeling. I didn't know what it was as a kid, but it was just like the sadness of like, my life's not normal, my life's not real. During that time, I met a family there that was in charge of it. Their name was Dave and Tony. They were the first people to really show me the love of Christ, even though I didn't love them, didn't care about them, but they kept saying things like, we love you, we care about you. And I was very confused because I just didn't hear that. The whole time I was trying to fix myself, I was trying to say, everything's gonna be okay, like I've got this, I'm strong, I've got it, you know. And all throughout that time, I had moments where I said, like, I hate you, I can't stand you guys, you're the worst people in the world, even though they had been in my life the most consistent out of anybody. At about the year mark, I really started to ask more questions about Christ and what he really meant, did he really care about me, and did he care about my brothers in the group home. And I just kept hearing the gospel presentation, I kept hearing it at home, kept hearing it at church, and then finally I just decided that it was for me and um, just accepted Christ. I remember sitting down with them at the table when they told me that they were going to leave. You know, I felt devastated. You know, it had been two years, and I was like another person. Like, you guys were the solids. After a while, they came and set me and another youth down and said, Hey, like, we're going to take you with us. And, you know, if you're okay with that. And, like, you know, tears were rolling down my eyes and, like, absolutely, where are we going? Going back to Indianapolis was like my dream the whole time. And so, like, we're going to Indy, we're going to go take you to Ben Davis, you're gonna be able to do ROTC and all this fun stuff that you wanna do. And they really changed my life. I mean, you know, I probably would have stayed in that institution until I turned 18 and then moved on to another institution for however long. And they just still love and still care for me and care for my wife. And, you know, I now call them mom and dad. A decision that we made as a couple before we even were gonna get married was we, we wanna foster. We want to to bring kids into our home that need love, that need care. You know, maybe their path is headed towards where mine was going. Instead of that path, you know, going the other way, going towards Christ and going to understand what love is and to understand what stability and strength and everything is. Without Dave and Tony, I may have never really reacted to the gospel. I don't know. Because of their ability to be uncomfortable and their willingness to be uncomfortable, my life's forever changed.